Have not Americans had enough of geriatric presidents? <laughs> you know, um, it, 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 that's sort of a strange question to ask because some people think, yes, we need to go to someone much younger. But the fact is that Trump came out at this point announcing his candidacy because he knew and he wanted to test who was going to be against him. And that is part of why we have this corrupt media. You could go to Wikipedia and find Operation Mockingbird, that the CIA has been in there forever. Then Obama repealed the 1948 Smith-Munt Act, which then permitted propaganda to be in broadcasting. It no longer said that it had to be credible. And so when he came out and said fake news, he warned us at the end of his speech that it is going to be very hard. The establishment, the media, the globalists are all going to come after. They're going to try to intimidate. But he needed to smoke him out. And guess what happened? The next day, Congress on the Democrat side wanted to create a law that he couldn't run. Then what happened was the Republicans came out and said they were going to inve investigate Hunter Biden. And Friday, the Department of Justice, AG, um, oh, I'd like to forget his name, and I would. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I do. I can't forget. I can't remember it right now. I mean, I can okay. see his yeah. face, you know. But what did he do? He launched an investigation and he put the most corrupt prosecutor who hates Trump on it. I'm very much against wokery. So with this, I'm with Donald Trump and I'm with uh, Ron DeSantis. But one of the things I don't like about wokery is that uh, it, it sort of encourages people to see themselves as victims. In everything that you've said just now, you've identified Donald Trump as a sort of victim. Is that really the way that he wishes to present himself? Doesn't he wish to present himself as, as you know, a kind of big man? I don't think he sees himself as a victim. But he has been victimized, and that is the difference. It's just the same as I was reading an article this morning, and they said, oh, he suffered this incredible defeat. What we were working on was taking over school boards. We wanted to get Nancy Pelosi out. We wanted local councils. Yes, he had 23 out of 235 that didn't um, win their seats. Yes, it was governors. Yes, it was some senators. But Donald Trump actually plays chess on a 5D level, and you never can anticipate what his next move is going to be. Well, we um, talked about Ron DeSantis and how popular he is for his war on wokery. Uh, let's hear what he has to say about that. We have embraced freedom. We have maintained law and order. We have protected the rights of parents. We have respected our taxpayers. And we reject woke ideology. We will never, ever surrender to the woke mob. Florida is where woke goes to die. Florida is where woke goes to die. Dr. Jan, aren't you attracted by that? Um, look, I know Ron DeSantis, and actually, when we had some issues uh, for expats on tax, he was very, very helpful with us. Right now, I think it's parallel to Scott Walker, the governor of Wisconsin, that when 2016, he, everyone was hot on him just like they're hot on Ron DeSantis. And the thing is, yes, he's done an incredible job, and I think he's an incredible role model for other governors, but will it translate across other states? And that is to be seen, because American politics sometimes changes the next day. You never know what to anticipate. But let me go back to you saying about Trump coming across as a victim. That, I'm sorry that you interpreted it that way, because that's not really it. And I really want people to understand that they need to go to other sources because the media will not tell you about his successes. They will not tell you about anything that he does positively. They'll not tell you about his executive orders, 13848. Um, he won't, they won't tell you about some of the other articles that he did. They won't tell you about the devolution, that the con continuity of government plan that he put in. The reason that 
his Mar-a-Lago um, was seized upon was that they really wanted to get the PEDS, the Presidential Emergency Act document, which is only what Trump knows and the military that he had to put in place. Because before he left, he declared two national emergencies. And you know what? Biden hasn't reversed that. Biden has signed on to three of his executive orders to continue them going. So we have some very fascinating things that are going to come out in the next 60 to 90 days. In this media slot, we've just spoken to two Trump supporters. So no complaints uh, from, from your side, I imagine, about this. But just going back to the results, you, you see you've gone for low-hanging fruit. It's true that Nancy Pelosi is out. Uh, but, you know, that was eminently achievable. It's true that quite a lot of candidates endorsed by Trump won, but they were mostly candidates in seats whose result was known in advance. In, in the House seats, which were toss-ups, he, he backed five candidates and they all lost. So, please admit it, the, the results were not what Donald Trump hoped for. You know, when you say low-hanging fruit, I, I really object to that interpretation because one of the things that we looked at for the local and for school boards is that all of the grooming that was going on, the drag queen um, story time, uh, the amount of critical race theory, which basically tells anyone who's not white and white, that you're useless. You will never succeed. We needed to reverse in those ways because the Department of Education has just absolutely let the National Association of Teachers destroy our students, destroy their self-esteem, not even teach them anything. And that is really some of the important things. And people aren't looking at the state of the United States from the standpoint of stagflation, from the fact that some people are unable to even eat more than two meals a day because they want to put petrol in their car. We've got to look at those things.